I'm going to talk a little bit more about the, the course uh, and then uh, we, will, we will take a break uh, and then get on with the, with the rest of the topics. This course, I think it's extremely important because uh, something that you learn in here could save your life or could save the life of somebody that's working with you. Also, it may make a big difference in the way that you do your business and the uh, profitability that you get. We're going to see later on how safety is uh, really tied to the performance of the company. Now, uh, let me ask you, what do you think are the different costs that you have when an accident occurs? Negligence. I'm sorry, negligence? Uh, what kind of cost? Uh, can, you, can you elaborate? Oh, cost? Cost? Yeah. Oh, I think you said cost. Well, one of the causes is negligence, but the cost can be a major cost, you know, thousands Medical. of dollars. It can be a cost that you cannot even replace, like losing somebody's life. Right. Yeah. Right. Losing somebody's life is something that, can, that does not have a, you know, you can't replace that, uh, but it does have a very high cost associated with it. You mentioned medical, medical uh, cost. Is the first one? Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, from, a produ from a production, production standpoint, loss you have downtime. Production. You have loss of productivity. Loss of productivity, so, yeah. I mean, That's something that people sometimes do not realize. Right. You know, can you elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, if you have an accident, somebody falls, the downtime just on the surface, you know, you have the whole iceberg mm -hmm. theory, okay? The 10% is the medical cost, the hey, drive him to the clinic, how much did it cost to get stuff out of his eye? But the big picture is the downtime that you have. He may have fallen in a critical path area where you have 60, 70 guys working, you have to clear that area out for a certain amount of time. Um, if it prompts an OSHA inspection, now they'll either be there that day or the following day. So that's more downtime that you're not producing, so you're pushing your schedules back. So that has a, a compound effect, mm -hmm. you know, not even getting into the medical. And then you could get into the medical, and depending on how you, how you manage that claim, it could get problematic, okay? You want to throw the worker to the side, to the dogs, if you will, and not really care for him, then, you know, he gets an attorney, and then you start to incur costs that way as well. So Very good. it's important that you manage it from the minute it happens all the way back until that person gets back to work. 100%. Very good. Excellent. Any other costs that uh, we have not mentioned? Insurance. Insurance, insurance right? Exactly. You, you have uh, insurance costs and they will uh, go up. Exactly. <coughs> yeah. One of the things that does affect the company is your experience modification. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Your, your accident prone, your experience modification goes up and your insurance rates go up immediately. You're right. Exactly right. Very good. Insurance cost goes up. You know the uh, the the. What about the the company's image? Hmm? It starts to deteriorate, right? And then people will not want to work with you because you have a, a accident prone record, or will want to work with you because you have an impeccable uh, rating and uh, and uh, history of uh, no accident. So. That also impacts uh, the, the, that's a cost that the company has to bear, right? When you have loss of business uh, for that. So uh, OSHA has a uh, online estimator here. We're going to uh, take a quick look. Uh, where they, they present, you know, how much uh, an accident can cost and uh, how much money you need to sell in order to recover from that uh, accident. So here they they have uh, they, they talk about the direct cost. You know you have uh, materials that may have uh, been damaged or equipment that may that been uh, damaged. Plus you have uh, you know the the medical costs and so on. So here they ask you to select a uh, injury type. Uh, what injury type uh, do you want? To choose one. The concussion. Okay, concussion. Uh, and the profit margin. What's the profit margin that you guys work with? 
How many injuries do we get here? One, let's two, two. Let's, let's say two. two. Two people got injured. All right. So, according to this uh, figure, we have two incidents. Uh, the direct cost it's uh, in the $158,000. The indirect cost in the $174,000 for a total cost of $300,000. So, you need, if, uh, if you're working at 5% profit, you need to sell three million, three and a half million dollars to cover for those two uh, accidents. That seems pretty steep, uh, but then again, it's, uh, it's uh, the whole um, concept that the, the, the cost, you know, it's not only what you see, but it's also what you don't see, the increase in rates, the uh, problems with the, with the authorities, the fees that you're going to get, the push down in the um, schedule and so on. So this uh, shows that it, it is uh, uh, expensive to have accidents. So one of the, the major uh, concepts in this class and the factors is going to be, okay, how can we avoid having accidents on the job site? So um, we have, uh, we, we've talked a little bit about this already, the injury or death uh, of the employee and the cost associated with that, equipment, materials, low morale and productivity, what you were saying before, you know, people start to, to feel that they're working in an unsafe environment. They slow down to make sure that they're not going to get injured also. People start to talk about what happened. Company gets bad reputation. You know, there could be legal consequences and it, the, the list just goes on and on and on. In the, st in the United States, the major uh, lead uh, accident uh, cost is the motor vehicle accidents. So that, that's in general in the United States. In construction, the lead cost uh, is falls. Okay, one third of the accidents in construction can be uh, found in this category, uh, falls. There are other uh, accidents or other uh, um, sources of uh, uh, you know, accidents and, and, and disease, uh, death, and, and you know, uh, possibilities for people to get uh, sick uh, to the point that they cannot uh, continue working. Poisoning, drowning, fire-related issues, suffocation, firearms, others. So this may not happen in the work that you're doing right now, but maybe later on you're involved with the making some work in a pier where you have you know water nearby and then it's a possibility for somebody falling down and, and drown you know you never know so there are different types of uh, uh, causes that can lead to uh, accidents uh, OSHA is the occupational safety and health administration these uh, it's a, a, a organization created by the Congress in 1970 looking to protect employees uh, while they're doing their work. Is anyone uh, familiar with OSHA? Obviously you are. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what they do? Well, okay. Basically their idea is to ensure a safe and healthful condition for the workers on, on a, a job train. So that, that's uh, what OSHA is about training, education, and uh, accident prevention. They, uh, they have a website, uh, so it's OSHA.gov. Uh, when I talked about the uh, syllabus, there is another book that I um, recommend uh, to have, is the, the, actually the, the book of uh, OSHA regulations, but it, you don't need to buy it, that's why we're not providing it, it's online. If you go here to regulations, uh, they have the standards for the different industries. They have general industry, which is the 1910 uh, section. Then they have construction, which is the 1926 uh, 
then uh, my time uh, we're going to obviously focus on construction so we will be talking about uh, 29 CFR which is the code of federal regulations 29 and then standards 1926 cover all the uh, construction they have uh, record keeping this is uh, very important also the uh, as we have talked uh, before here uh, there you go. That's uh, that's the uh, print printed book. <coughs> All right. I have a different version. Uh, yeah, that one is an old one. Yeah. Okay. So here it, it looks looks like this is the Code of Federal Regulations 29, uh, 1926 for construction. So it has uh, all the regulations. The the nice thing about um, the website is that you can uh, do search. So if you want to know about fall protection, you just type it in the search and uh, you will get a lot of links that are related to the topic that you're looking for. So you have 1926-501, uh, you need to have fall protection. By the way, I don't expect anybody to memorize the numbers. You know, that's on you. If you want to do it for your own knowledge, that's fine, but I'm not going to ask you Okay, 1926, 501, what does that say? Forget I want you to understand the concept, have the common sense, know the minimum you know, requirements uh, that the law says so you can avoid fines, and that's the, the, the purpose. All right, so that, that is how you, you will get uh, information about uh, OSHA. You, you can go to their uh, website, osha.gov, and uh, they have a lot of information. I mean, it's uh, overwhelming the amount of things that they have over there. You have videos, you have checklists, they have publications for almost everything. And I do have uh, in our course site um, the publications that I think are most relevant to each one of the topics. Which uh, reminds me that uh, I, I, I showed the uh, the uh, home page, oops, yeah, but I didn't go into the uh, presentations. <coughs> so somebody asked me, well, would you post your presentations <laughs> online ahead of time? Yes. Here are the uh, 13 modules that we're going to cover. So each one of those, uh, when you click in the module, you will have um, the slides. Of, mm, very often, I, I try to do it every time, but not every time I, I, I get it. I, I post uh, slides and then handouts. The handouts are a compressed version of the slides. The handouts, I have uh, eight slides per page. So, you know, it's kind of a condensed uh, information. And then I have uh, the slides, which is uh, one by one. So the idea is that you print your eight a slice per page, and then if there's one that you cannot read, then go ahead and print that uh, particular slide. Um, so that one I didn't have uh, too much, but uh, for example, if we go module four, then you see there's a lot of uh, handouts here. That uh, besides the slides, you have you know a job hazard analysis. So these are normally publication from OSHA that are related to the topic that we're going to talk about. So, you know, you just uh, click on them and it will bring a um, a handout uh, about the topic that, that we're looking at. Okay? So that that's a uh, very, very important. Uh, there will be a few questions in the exams about the handouts. You know, most of the topics are in the slides, but every now and then I, I choose a handout and ask a question about it. So that that can help you for your uh, work and also for your exams. All right? Great. Right. So we talked about uh, the um, hazards in construction. We said that the majority of the, the accidents in construction are related to falls. But that's not the only one. There is also electrocution, struck by, cut in or between. So we're going to have uh, lectures on each one of these uh, focus for 
we'll concentrate on those and then we will obviously talk about other type of um, uh, hazards that are related uh, to construction. Okay. What do you think of the uh, causes of uh, an accident? Here, now, we, we're going to look into uh, accident causation theory. They look at, okay, what makes an accident? You know, how can that be prevented? Is there any way that we can analyze things and, and detect what problems there are? So there is the, the, the domino theory, there's uh, human factors, accident, incident, epidemiological, Right. That's a tough word for me. System theory, combination theory, behavior, you know, those uh, theories are all looking into what causes an accident and how can we prevent accidents. The first one, uh, the domino theory, this is kind of uh, old, okay, but it still holds. It's, uh, it's interesting. This uh, guy, uh, Herbert Henrich, looked at 75,000 accidents on the workplace, and we're talking about 1920. That's way before OSHA, right? That's where people, they did the work the, the way they knew and the way they were taught, and, and then uh, he looked at those and he determined that 88% of these were caused by unsafe acts of the workers. Cutting corners, you know, uh, inventing stuff. Inventing stuff, using the wrong tool, using the wrong method, poor training, poor judgment, most of the cases. 10% unsafe conditions of the work. You know, you're, you're, you're put to work in a situation that is dangerous, that is not safe, that you are likely to get into an accident. And from these 75,000, only 2% were considered unavoidable things that, well, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, you will not be able to avoid that uh, kind of uh, accident. So this is uh, what, what he uh, come up with. Um, injuries are the result of a series of factors, okay? Uh, when one of those factors is the accident itself. Um, an accident can occur only as the result of an unsafe act by a person, or a physical, mechanical hazard, or both. Most accidents are the result of unsafe behavior of people. Um, an unsafe act by a person, or an unsafe condition, does not always result in an accident. You can have the near miss, right? Where some, oh my God, I almost had an accident, and uh, I'm glad it didn't happen because it was you know, very close. But, um, so we, we can have unsafe conditions that do not result in an accident, but certainly accidents come from either unsafe condition or, or actions taken by people who are not uh, doing safe work. Now, we, we have to look into why are the reasons for people to commit unsafe acts. You know, you were talking about these two workers were on the roof, they were doing their work, and they decided to take off their lanyards from the photo arrest system. I mean, why would you put your life at risk for that? I mean, there has to be a reason. So looking into what are the reasons of these people can prevent accidents, can say, okay, is there any better way to tie them to the roof so they can do their work safer and, and uh, still be productive? The severity of an accident is largely fortuitous uh, and it's largely uh, preventable. Uh, the best accident prevention techniques are analogous to the best quality and productivity standards. We're going to see later on that there's a very good tie between uh, safety and, uh, and uh, productivity. Management should assume responsibility for safety because it's uh, in the best interest. The supervisor is the key person in the prevention of workplace accidents. In addition to the direct cost of an accident, they're also <coughs> hidden on indirect cost. We've talked about that before. So basically, he comes and says, well, from all the studies, there are five factors that, that lead to an accident. Social environment, ancestry, that means it has to do with the people who had a culture 
of uh, not being safe. You know, this I've been doing this all my life. Never even happened. You know, I know what I'm doing. I don't need any safety ties. And then they start talking like that in the job site. Other people hear them and say, "Well, I don't want to look the old person here all tied up when everybody else is not." Then uh, fault of a person, unsafe acts, and medical and, and mechanical uh, or physical hazards. Then that become brings in the accident and of course the injury. So the unsafe acts and the mechanical or physical hazard are the direct causes of the accident. If we remove that, then the accident could be prevented. The accident could be you know, one of the focus four or could be another one. So we have here again four introduction struck by, cut in or between. And then the injury that results from the accident could be lacerations, fracture, or even death. So those are, are kind of uh, the, the analysis taken uh, on those uh, accidents. In the side of physical factors, training, natural ability of the person, fatigue, stress, you know, some people bring into their job site the problems they have at home. And they, they are distracted. You know, that guy that got struck by a, a truck, you say, well, how in the world could you be struck by a truck that comes with an alarm, it's backing up, you know, and you still get hurt? Because your mind is not in what you're doing. Yes? Just out of curiosity, <clears throat> I was actually wondering the same thing, but I remember in your paper that you asked about topics, one of the things that was listed was noise on the north side. Uh -huh. So could it have been that when the truck was backing up and it was making um, the beep, the beep, sound, beep yeah. there was so much outside noise and him, I guess, to a certain extent. Um, have you ever heard a beep of those trucks? Uh, no. It's really loud. <laughs> you cannot it's miss annoyingly it. loud. It's yeah. annoyingly it's loud. Annoying. That a lot of operators will tell you, like you go up to them and say, hey, what's up with your backup alarm? You're like, oh, uh, oh, it's not working. Oh, let me take a look at it. Usually they what that means is they, they disconnect, disconnect it, it and then they're like, okay, you're, you're going to ask for it here at this job site. I'll connect it. Because they don't want to listen to it all day. Can yeah. you imagine Remember, you're asleep at night? Let's say, let's say you have a, there's a backhoe operator, a track hoe operator. Mm -hmm. It's just back back and forth. And every time he backs up, you hear, beep, 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 beep. Yeah, yeah. It's constant. And if you got three of those one close to each other, it's all beeping all the time. Right. Yeah. So missing it is important. No. Yeah. Yeah. Becoming Almost impossible. It, so which, even even if there was a lot of noise, it's a total different. It's a it's at a total different tone level yeah. tone pitch mm -hmm. that you. It's very difficult to make. Because I was thinking, like you said, if there was like a lot of other um, equipment doing the same back and forth, maybe you were thinking even, it was somewhere else. It was thinking it's, that yeah, the it whole came idea. The else. whole idea is that that when you hear it, you pay attention. Right. So. So the person must have, I mean, that, that gentleman, that, that guy probably must have been thinking that hey, maybe he had well, a big fight with his wife and he wanted to make a phone call. He could have partially been dehydrated. That's why he asked yeah, for the water right. break and he's kind of distraught at this point. He, he could have been complacent. Been. He's like, yeah, I hear beeping. I've been on this job for eight months. Right. I just walk. So you don't, you the truck's supposed to see me. I have a vest on. Here you go. Yeah. Oh, because everybody thinks now the because they've got a, a pink and a, a orange or a yellow, lime yellow vest. They just fed off things. Yeah. It's true. The operator's supposed to see you, but if he does it and you're eating shit, it's gonna cost right. you, not him. Yeah, I mean it's you a big, it's a it's a fight. I mean, one of the most important parts is to be aware of your surroundings when yeah. you're in a job site. You know, you need to know what's around you, what's going on, and uh, remember that that the construction is constantly changing. changing. Absolutely, yeah. the uh, the uh, the surroundings are constantly changing very dynamic. you it's very dynamic it's not like an industry like if you go for the uh general for a warehouse yeah, or general it's 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 you know you said racks here and they're going to be there for the next 15 20 years, years. here you're going to have a cable on the floor now here and in 15 minutes it's going to be over there yeah it's a, it's a very changing uh, it's a very dynamic, dynamic. absolutely, absolutely. Okay, we could have uh, environmental factors, also noise, as you said, distractions, you know, maybe there is something else going on over here and the guy was just looking over there and didn't see the truck coming. Uh, that could happen. Distractions, internal factors, 
personal problems, emotional stress, worry, you know, maybe he's in the brink of a divorce or who knows. Mm -hmm. and his mind is not in what he's doing, it's, it's somewhere else. So that can cause uh, um, uh, accidents. Uh, then uh, people can can react uh, the wrong way. People can 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 do something stupid uh, when they see a situation <coughs> that develops. You know uh, that how a person responds to a situation can prevent or cause an accident. Just comes to my mind. I, I, I shouldn't tell about this story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. I'm at the University of Maryland, okay, and. Uh, my kids have uh, swimming lessons in the afternoon, okay? So I'm over there, and, and all of a sudden, this tornado comes up out of nowhere, okay? And, you know, I'm, I'm in a building what, uh, watching through a window, and I see this tornado. I mean, it, it was amazing to see that thing going through. I didn't realize that it went through the university at the time. I was uh, in, a, in a building outside. So, wow, that, that was amazing, and, and I was really impressed. And my wife calls and says, you know, I'm taking the kids uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the swimming lessons. And I don't know, it didn't occur to me that I'm just looking at a tornado that's going through, and that can come back or whatever. Say, sure, sure, come by. <laughs> oh, man. She was really upset with me because of the storm, you know, <coughs> uh, she got caught into traffic and uh, there was a high winds all over the place and that, that was the wrong reaction to the situation, you know. Yeah. You, you don't have to be teaching safety to know that that's a stupidity, mm -hmm. but still, you know, for whatever reason, it can happen. And uh, thanks God nothing happened to her, you know, it was just the rain and uh, traffic, but uh, that tornado killed two people, uh, two to girls actually um, on the university was a very, very uh, big tragedy. So that, that's an example of uh, how a person's response can prevent or cause an accident. Of course, the, the right thing to say is to stay home, you know, get, uh, be safe uh, first and don't worry about everything else. Okay, uh, a person detects a hazardous condition, that person can do nothing or can correct the situation, you know. How the person acts to a situation and reacts to something they see can change uh, what happens on the job site. Most times, what you were saying before, you know, people are using the wrong tool for the job. They say, well, you know, I can make it work with this thing, it's not the right tool, but anyway, I can do it. I know a, a friend of a friend who lost a finger doing, you know, uh, landscape just because decided to use a, a, the wrong tool to cut some fibers. Stupid mistake. And uh, that cost uh, a, a finger for, you know, for that person. Wrong person for the job, wrong procedure to do the job. You know, we're going to see some examples of this kind of uh, um, situations where you, you, you take the wrong tool, the wrong person, the wrong equipment, and then that leads to an accident. A person <coughs> undertakes an activity that he or she does not know how to perform. Uh, I was, you know, in, in class I always ask people to, to, to give examples of uh, their personal stories, right? And then uh, in one of my classes, this lady said, well, I hired somebody who told me they knew how to use a nail gun. And all of a sudden, he walks in there, I, I shot himself in the foot because he didn't know really how to use the tool. And, but, but, you know, they, they need the job. So they, they come and, and they say something that's not really true. And there you go, you have an accident. I don't know if you had any similar experience with that. Uh, that's a person who does not know how to do the job and still goes ahead and... Yeah, usually, usually on a job site, it's because one trade is trying to do something that they're not, that they aren't. So right. the drywall guy is trying to play electrician because the power is not there. So he's yeah. over there trying to mess with the, with the box and it's like, hey, you're not an electrician, don't touch yeah. anything. 
Um, or you know, you have an installer trying to cut wood so he can put up a guardrail. You're not a carpenter. You don't use a circular saw. So that's usually when contractors get into trouble where they try to start playing carpenter, they start playing electrician or something that they aren't. Right. Um, and a lot of the a lot of what you get is, well, I used to do this on the side, and that's why I could do it, and so on and so forth. So I mean, the the, the excuses are endless. Yeah. Underestimate the risk involved. Also, that that's another situation that, that can bring you know accidents into uh, play. All right, then there's uh, the human factors of accident causation. A person looks at a, a job that they have to do. They uh, have either inappropriate activities or they respond in a way that is not appropriate, or they overload. You know, the person has uh, more than they can handle either physically <coughs> or mentally. You know, they could be under big stress. The accident incident theory, it's uh, similar to the human factor theory, but it brings also a little bit more uh, policies, responsibility, training, inspection. You know, the person may be overloaded, or the, the work itself may be designed for failure, maybe there's uh, things in the actual procedure that are dangerous and not really um, uh, appropriate for the work that is going to be done. So then, uh, if those are the the causes of an accident, what can you do about it? You can look at the engineering side and say, okay, how can we do this job safer? Is there any way that we can change the way the work is done to make a safe environment? Can we educate people? Can we train them to do the work and the way they should do it? And then enforce that people are doing what you're telling to do and they're using the uh, measures that you have designed to make that work better. This has to do with the... Uh, uh, hygiene and environmental factors that can spread disease and sickness. You know, uh, I guess uh, in, in construction, we'll look at uh, the flu. It's uh, probably the, the, the biggest issue where people will get sick and they, they spread that. So all of a sudden you have a, a group of people that are not able to do their work, not really uh, too much uh, into into the the accident itself, but it's uh, environmental uh, actions. Then uh, there's this uh, system theory, where you have a system that's working, it's working well, and uh, you have a person that's operating a machine or the center environment, and while this uh, is maintained. The, the work is safe. So now what happens if you have to replace that person? Somebody else comes and they don't know the machine that well, they don't know the tricks, that machine may have uh, issues with the way it's operated, and now when you change that person, the system is not the same and then you are uh, prone to accidents. Or you change the machine, you use another one that has, uh, may have problems. Or environment change. What happens if there is a thunderstorm? Can you do the work uh, the same way you were doing it before? So whenever one of these changes, you want to ev evaluate the, you know, take the information in, evaluate the risk under the new condition, and then decide do we want to do the task, do we want to change that, or we want to postpone that for a later date where conditions are back into a safer Combination theory basically it says, well, all of these theories are right, you know, I'm just going to combine them and the result of an accident can be uh, a combination of uh, different factors. The uh, behavioral theory uh, looks at the behavior of the employees on the job site, identify uh, factors that make the employee, uh, you know, take certain behavior that is not safe and how can we prevent that from happening. 
uh, focus on the positive consequences, you know, you will be safe, you will go back home the same way that you arrive at the work today, rather than uh, taking, you know, a negative aspect to it. Um, plan integrations with the feelings and attitude of the individual employee, you know, maybe that person that got, you know, struck uh, by a truck, you know, what, what's going on, what can we change to make the attitude on the side more aware, you know. Who's responsible for safety? Everyone. That's the right answer. That's the right answer. Okay, uh, we're going to see this term a uh, couple of times uh, during the, the, the course of this uh, um, course. The competent person uh, is defined as one who's capable of identifying existing and predictable hazards in the surroundings of working conditions which are unsanitary, hazardous, or dangerous to employees and who has authorization to make prompt corrective measures to eliminate them. By way of training and of expertise, a competent person is not, not, not durable. So that person uh, knows about safety uh, because it's been working for a long time in that uh, area or it's been trained um, in certain areas of uh, expertise. All right. Uh, this is a, a interesting case, uh, the case of Alcoa. Uh, you guys familiar with uh, Alcoa? You know what that is? It's aluminum company of America. It's uh, aluminum, right? It's an aluminum company. It's a, it's a really interesting case. Uh, uh, they, they, it, let me read this. In the past year, Alcoa's management had made mistake, misstep after misstep on wisely trying to expand into new product lines while competitors stole customer and profits away. In 1987, Alcoa names a new president, uh, Paul O'Neill, and then uh, this is his first speech. So imagine a company that is going, you know, bankrupt almost, you know, it's just going down in business, it's doing worse every, 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 every day. And when this uh, president takes over, he walks in and says, I want to talk to you about worker safety. That's the first thing that comes out of his mouth. Every year, numerous Alcoa workers are injured so badly that they miss a day of work. Our safety record is better than the general American workforce, especially considering that our employees work with metals that are 1,500 degrees and machines that can rip a man's arm off. But it's not good enough. I intend to make Alcoa the safest company in America. I intend to go for zero injuries. So what do you think that happened when he said that to the uh, stockholders? Water fire him. Probably. Huh? They wanted to fire him. <laughs> they wanted to crucify him and say, hey, man, what about profits? You know, what about the, the, the you know, taking the market, market share, and, you know, what are you going to do about it? Huh? So it's interesting. Some people, some, some people went out the, the room and start calling and say, hey, you have to sell all your shares. <laughs> this guy is just going to crash this company down to the floor. Investors in the room almost stampede out the doors when the presentation ended. One jumped to the lobby, found the payphone, and called the 20 largest client. The board put a crazy hippie in charge of, he's going to kill the company, you know? <laughs> I ordered them to sell the stock immediately before everyone else in the room started calling their clients and telling them the same thing. So everybody panicked about this. Uh, a year later, Alcoa profit will hit a record high. By the time O'Neill retired in 2000, the company's annual net income was five times larger than before he arrived and its market capitalization had risen by $27 million billion. Someone who invested a million dollars in Alcoa on the day O'Neill was hired would have earned another million dollars in dividends while he headed the company. And the value of their stock would be five times bigger than he had. 
So he did something right. He knew what he was talking about. He knew that safety, if you're working in a safe environment and you create a safety uh, uh, set of mind, that will lead towards high profits. Then you ask, okay, why? How, how can that happen? I mean, what is the relationship? Very simple. He set up a, a system in which every time there was an accident, he had to be informed <clears throat> immediately. You know, so people will say, well, I don't want to call the president of the company and say, hey, there was an accident on my watch. You know, so people started to say, okay, what are you doing to prevent accidents, right? So they started doing uh, circles of safety where they involve all the employees and say, how can we make this work safe? How can we prevent accidents? How can we do this work better, right? So what did that lead to? Improved productivity, right? People start looking at, okay, how can I do the work safer, better, faster, and still, you know, have no injuries? So those things started to lead to another one, and another one, another one, and then all of a sudden they are concerned about quality, they're concerned about cost, they're concerned about time, not only safety, but all their aspects of the work that will bring profits up. So, and that's exactly what happened in the core. Here, uh, I uh, posted a, a uh, section from a book where I took this uh, reading. So I will really encourage you to, to read that and uh, see how a safety management system brought in a company that was almost going bankrupt all the way to be one of the top companies in the United States and worldwide. All right? Any questions? Any comments? All right. So that's uh, all I have for today. I